Hello, uh, welcome to the Nationwide Platforms webinar all about low level access and safely working at low level. Uh, I'm Jordan Britchford, I'm the Marketing Programs Manager here at Nationwide Platforms and I'm the organiser of uh, this and our future webinars events uh, which are taking place uh, kind of in place of our Working at Height uh, Best Practice Forum. Now that's an annual event that we uh, we usually host in the uh, normal non-corona times and uh, that's coming back next year in 2022 in spring. But in the build up to that and to make sure that there's uh, something interesting for you to see in the meantime, we've got a series of webinars across a whole range of powered access topics. So starting this month, we have low level access and safety and efficiency at working at low levels. In June, we've got a webinar about pre-use checks and the efficiencies that those can drive. In July, we're covering the topic of training for both new operators and managers. In September, we'll be covering working at height safety innovations. October, understanding the ground conditions on different sites, both inside and outside. November is when we will be bringing some information about uh, vehicle mounted platforms, everything from the small van mounted cherry pickers all the way to the 90 meter Bronto truck mounted platforms. And uh, skipping December, in January, we'll be doing a preview of the Working at Height event, which will be in spring of next year. So uh, I'll just run a short introduction of uh, myself and my colleagues now. So as I mentioned, I'm really quite new to Nationwide Platforms here. I've only been here um, three months, but my uh, my colleagues are much more experienced than I in this in the powered access world. But uh, yeah, for my sins, I'm, I'm organizing the webinar uh, webinar program that I've just outlined and also the Working at Height Best Practice event next year. And uh, joining me today are my colleagues Louise Smith, who is our field sales manager for specialist vehicles, who's got 14 years experience with the company, uh, manages a wide range of industries, including construction, telecoms, media, and is a specialist in uh, 1B solutions. And uh, also we'll, uh, doing the main presentation is Matt Parfit, who uh, is our head of sales and strategic accounts, who's got not, also got 14 years experience here at Nationwide Platforms. So got quite a lot of experience in the room here, uh, managing all sorts of requirements across construction and industry, and uh, also hosts a series of masterclasses uh, every year. And so uh, there might be a webinar on that coming up as well. So watch this space. But uh, yes, I'll uh, now hand over to Matt for the uh, for the main body of the uh, the webinar. So Matt, take it away. Okay, thank you, Jordan. Um, and just to let anyone know that you know that I guess the the, the running of this. If anyone's got any questions uh, throughout the webinar, uh, there's a section uh, within your, your little box on the right hand side. It should be for questions rather than chat. So if you put any questions in there, uh, that's what Louise will be uh, running today, and and she'll raise them with me at the end, and we'll do our best to to answer any questions you, you may have as we progress through the presentation. Um, so this uh, this webinar, as Jordan's rightfully said, is about working safely at low levels and how we can help you with that. Uh, and I guess just to start off, I want to uh, make a, a quick sort of uh, thank you to, to those who've contributed to this within Nationwide, but also outside of Nationwide. Certainly uh, Marina from Bravi and, and, and Lee from uh, from Power Towers, as well as our customer base uh, across you know, Flynn and Balfour Beach. So thank you, everyone, for your contribution. And hopefully that will benefit uh, the audience here today. So first and foremost, as any uh, discussion I, I kick off with any customer will be, is, is about understanding risk yeah, at, at whatever height that may be. Yeah. So I don't know how much you will or will not know about the, uh, the, the, the data that's out there in the market, but we like to support our customers and advise based on, based on hard facts rather than what we think is right or wrong. Yeah. So within uh, the, the, the body of this slide here, you've got an idea of, of where the, the, the major contributors towards mute fatalities uh, reside. And that's gained from, from two primary documents, really. Uh, the first one being RR961, um, slightly out of date now, but it's, it's up to date to 2013. And you can see there's 290 fatalities globally uh, to that point. And they are across uh, those those particular areas there are raised on, on, on the slide bottom left. Yeah, you, you can see falls, uh, entrapment, uh, and other areas are, are major contributors. 
Um, 60% of those are falls, yeah, and that's an important one, not just for low level, but it is an important one to, 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 to be aware of in, in terms of what we can all do to, to reduce those, those known risks. Uh, and if we take that up to, you know, a, a little bit more up to date, you've got the, uh, the global MUP safety report for MyPath, uh, which was produced, I think, just over a year ago, year and a half ago, uh, which took the data to a bit more recent, um, uh, you know, with a bit more recency from 2016 through to 2018. Uh, and you can see there, 220 uh, fatalities were recorded across a very similar um, list of cause causations. Yeah, whilst there's a bit more richer data now, so we can see things like uh, falling objects and other things like that. But the, you know, the, the original risks are still there. Um, and that's not to say that no one's done nothing about it. There's been a lot which is done to try and work towards and improve our, our awareness of risk and how we deal with that. But with the amount of machines which you know continues to 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 come into the market, um, I guess it's a, a more of a proportional look. But if, if one thing or another, uh, it, it it means this isn't the job not done. You know, we need to continue to support you, you guys, our customers, uh, to mitigate for these risks in whatever way we can do. Yeah. Um, so, and, and an important point. Obviously, this is about low level. This particular webinar, but it, it's important to recognise that risk of entrapment, of falls, of overturn isn't just at 40 meters up in the roof uh, of a building yeah 60 percent uh, of of the major four related injuries which are recorded happen below head height um so that's something i think which hopefully gives a bit of context as to why we're we doing this this isn't just about trying to give you the uh, the, the best range of products we have uh, for the sake of it this is because it, it will help you work safer um you know and, and i'm sure you all be aware of the work at Height Regs 2005. You know, there's a push there for better choices and low level access, you know, is, is, is certainly a, a, a deemed as a more informed, a, a safer, a more productive chart choice rather than just resorting to the traditional non mechanical means of, of access, uh, you know, be that ladders or, ladders or stat, steps. Um, and whilst, you know, uh, like I've said here that, you know, falls. Uh, or injuries or, or risk at height, you know, will, will be at three meters or 40 meters or anywhere. You know, the risk actually can happen when you're not even elevated. So if you look at that blue platform in the middle there, where the chap is standing in the platform facing towards the swing gates, you know, a, an example I always give in the mute masterclass I've been delivering uh, over the last five or six years um, is where someone was driving a platform exactly of, of that nature, whereby I think they were were facing the other way. Uh, but they were looking at the wheels um, to, to determine where they were driving, um, I guess because there was something on the ground and they needed to navigate. Um, but they were driving it in that position stowed uh, and without looking above them, the operator, operator was then trapped between an overhead structure and those handrails. And he came away with some pretty serious life changing inj injuries. So, again, it just gets the message across why we're doing this. You know, it's not just at 40 meters, it's not just when you're elevated. It's as soon as you step in the platform, you need to be aware and vigilant of, of the risk of, of, of you know, injury uh, across those various different areas um, within these platforms. So, that's the why we're doing this, really, you know, to, to support the better use of, uh, of, of your access options. So, and this you know, bleeds into the next section. It's about you going through your, your decision tree or whatever your method is of, of choosing the right tool for the task. Um, we've got an example there of, of, of use from one of our customers, which is, is the method they go through. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a chart they would, they would ask their specifiers particular questions on um, when they're assessing a job as to how they're going to work at height. And there's a bunch of yes, no's, which will then determine how they justify and, and, and prove whether they're going to be using tube and clip scaffold, a system scaffold like the hacky or the layer, uh, rope access, a mechanical access, you know, which is what we're here to talk about today, as well as their non-mechanical access, if it's justified because of the scenario which that operator is, is, is placed within. So again, this isn't to say this is the method you should do it. This is just to say, this is how other customers do it. You know, what's your method? Is it good enough? Is it comprehensive enough? And if we can support you, then, you know, by all means, raise some questions at the end and we can get in contact. Um, beyond the actual method you use, clearly you, I don't expect our customers to be experts in every diff, every single product range uh, that's that's out there. You know, that's the job of the supplier. So that's where this next section comes in to say, you know, do, where are you gonna get your advice? Where are you gonna get your expert support from um, across all of those methods? You know, you know, clearly I like to think we're, you know, we're the expert when it comes to 
you know, um, you know powered access solutions. Um, but who do you rely on to make sure if you are going to use scaffold or system scaffold or rope access, you know, where do you get that support? Where do you get that expertise to make sure you know that they are the right uh, tools for the task? Um, and I don't always rely on, and I know it's an easy thing to say, don't always rely on the last year's solution being this year's answer. You know, there's a number of case studies, which I'll show you in, in a minute, uh, where we've proven the case against people using non-mechanical access uh, compared to a mechanical solution, whereby we can make the job safer, but, you know, significantly more productive. So again, you know, always, always challenge your supplier uh, and, and, and engage with them uh, in case there are newer, newer solutions out there. So clearly, you know, I work for Nationwide. We provide, you know, a, a whole range of powered access solutions from three and a half meters to 90. Um, we're talking about low level here today. So clearly I'm gonna be uh, trying to give you an idea of how these solutions can help you. Um, but to start, you know, if I was gonna summarize it, you know, a, a low level access platform, and you can see some of the variants we do have, they're incredibly easy and simple to use. And that's a big thing, you know, when working at low level, you want something which is, which is straightforward. Um, they're also very productive and, and quicker in a number of ways, and they're quicker to use. You know, the, the you know going up, driving, coming down, then having to reset up the stabilizers on, on a non-mechanical solution, move it, and then go up again. Um, but they're also quicker in terms of the setup time. Yeah. So again, that, that's quite a big thing, and we've proven that on, on some of these case studies. So that's a start for ten. Some of the, the the primary benefits of low level. You've also got the efficiency, the, the safety gains. You've got the stability gains, and the fact that they just take up less space than something which has to have a stabilizer sticking out either sides to make sure that machine is is stable to be used at whatever height you need. Um, also, there's a point here for training, making sure that, you know, the range you do use, you've got the, the, the relevant tickets for. So the products we're talking about today would be push around verticals. So they'd be the machines you would push into place and then wind up to height, or you would push into place and you would, you know, via electric means uh, ascend. Um, or you've got the three A solutions, which are basically machines that will uh, drive uh, under power and elevate and descend under power. Yeah, and they will come under those two different IPATH categories of PAV and, uh, and 3A. But again, I'll, I'll remind the, the, uh, the, you of this, the, uh, the, the message on the previous slide, you know, it's the expertise which is going to get you that right machine, that right tool, that right solution for the task. And we can help that, you know, with, with regard to surveys, they're free of charge. We can help with regard to online information like today. Uh, or we can send you the, the hard copy product guides or a link to the, you know, the electronic version. And again, if you want some of that information, you just need to put it onto the question board um, and we'll send you that following the session today. Um, because just within our fleet, you know, you think low level, there's probably not a lot of machines out there, but there's 13 options just within our range of platforms uh, when you're working from, from three and a half to that nine and a half meter range. So again, there's, there's stuff out there you might not have seen before. And I pretty much guarantee you by the time you get to the bottom of this presentation, there will be. Uh, and that's the point of this, not just to say our products are great. This is to say we can help you with solutions you may not have seen before work safer uh, and more productively. So um, some of the key considerations, I've tried to sort of summarize this into some of the areas where you might uh, need to look at, uh, which could benefit you in the use of a low level access platform. So first and foremost, it's understanding the task at hand yeah and if you look at any document out there with regard to the planning of mucs be that gis 6 or, or any other means you know one of the first points is you, you need to plan you need to understand the task and how you're going to use your access method how you're going to select it and then how you're going to use it to do the job and that's no different with low level access so is it for example a one-off task um, is it a repeat task is it one where there's a fixed time scale against um, are you carrying materials uh, and how many people do you need up in that platform to do the job each of those will determine uh, the right uh, the right platform for the task, whether that's mechanical or, like I said, any of those other methods. Um, we've proven when it comes to the use of, of, of our low level access platforms, however, though, when you come up against traditional means of, of, of doing a job, be that a podium step or a ladder, some of these solutions are a lot more productive. And you can see there a, a case study that I've, I've put an example on there for where we worked with, with, with Power Towers, uh, with Lee uh, and Imtech, on Battersea Power Station uh, last year, whereby we proved, uh, and I can send you this, uh, the, you know, the more detail, we proved that uh, the use of that PAV, that push around solution was, was three times more productive than the, uh, the method they were using, um, uh, you know, alternatively, uh, which would have been podium steps. And they were put alongside each other on the same job 
and it was proven to be you know three times faster as well as safer uh, across a number of areas um, things also to be aware of in terms of the benefits with low level access um, uh, you know when considering task and productivity would be the fact that some of these machines can drive at height and you can see there from the table anything with a green tick in there will drive it it will drive at height so again that's a that's a big bonus for anyone who's on a on a repeat job you know light bulb to light bulb you know gantry to gantry whatever the job is you know that's quite a big benefit to have that that ability to drive at height um you've got the benefit of, of, of no tech no setting up with any of these platforms all you do is walk into them turn them on or wind the uh, the, the, the the turntable and away you go so there's no assembly uh, so that's going to save you time as, as well as make it a safer activity um once you're at height yeah you're going to have a, a much improved working space or a much more flexible working space uh, specifically in the uh, in the powered solutions where you've got extending decks so either single extending decks that should go up to a meter as you can see on the on the right hand side there or you've got double extending decks which just create a wider working space where you can work centrally but again it's flexibility at height to get the job done uh, more productively and an important point to, to, to mention on here is that some of these machines are rated to work outdoors as well uh, that is mentioned on the on the next slide after this but again uh, you, you need to be aware of that uh, so you're not putting the machines in the wrong location um, or you're not assuming the machine can't do the job because you assume all of these machines are, are indoor only so again things to consider when when assessing the task uh, and your productivity challenges uh, uh, when you know when using the right right platform for the job um, so we then get on to uh, the, the next part and this is about ground conditions so as Jordan said there's a whole session on this uh, later in the year um, but with, re with respect to low level, this is particularly important because they are quite light and they will allow you to do jobs where others won't because of you know, the, the, you know, the incumbent weight of a, of a 19 foot scissor, for example. Um, so you, you'll always have wherever you work, I would imagine, you know, you'll have a, a pressure or a weight limit that, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the terrain you're working on will be limited to specifically inside, whether that's raised access flooring or mezzanine flooring or anything else. You know, and it's, it's important to know that, you know, that there's a lot of, in our fleet which are going to be ideal for those, that, you know, those, those types of solutions, particularly the POVs are very relevant for, for those raised access flooring jobs um, that you may or may not have been aware, aware previously were, you know, applicable. Um, other things to consider when, you know, when, when selecting that right machine is, is terrain, is slope, uh, the distance that you might need to, to track that machine from the point where it's delivered to where you're going to be actually using it. Yeah. Um, that they're all things to to to, to evaluate um, the environment. Yeah, like I said on the previous slide, indoors and outdoors, and you can see there on the right hand side which of those you know solutions in our fleet uh, can work outdoors or in, and also the you know, the importance of not just weight limits, but you know reducing the the, the damage uh, that 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 particular solutions can cause to, to floors uh, if if you've not um, if you've not considered that beforehand. Yeah, whether that be white wheels, there whether that be um, uh, things like well, weight limits and things like that, which can cause damage. So again, that's where these machines can come into their own. Uh, and just if you look on the right hand side of the slide there, just a little example there in terms of, you know, it's a, some of the medium or heavy grade limits uh, to a raised access flooring type scenario. You can see there very clearly uh, the limits uh, that those different grades of flooring will have and how perhaps machines that people might have traditionally used for that type of job aren't relevant you know they're just unsafe because they're, they're, they're above the weight limit so a 19 foot scissor uh, clearly is not going to be relevant on any of those floor gradings but a four and a half meter nano for example would absolutely um, work safely within that so you avoid uh, examples like the image uh, below there so again they're just things to be aware of um, space and control is, is another big thing it's kind of related to productivity but also safety and, and just getting the job done in, in the means you, you would like so you've got to remember uh, that, that these machines whilst they're small they will have maximum dimensions whether that be height width length or anything else yeah so you need to make sure the job that you're asking it to do it can fit into so you can see some of the images there of these machines fitting into quite you know narrow spaces whether that be a lift uh, or an entrance doorway or working in an office space where you just need a, a better turning circle on a machine again they're things we can help with with surveys and support to determine uh, the right platform because the positioning and the, the the control over your positioning 
is really important. And there will be machines that are better or, 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 or worse in, in these areas, depending on what you need from it. Yeah, some of these machines will have, if not most of the self-propelled one, will have proportional drive. So that means when you move a small amount, the machine will move a small amount. But if you go, you know, straight from zero to, to, to full full activity, then that machine will suddenly jerk and, and come into action. So again, you know, it's, it's, it's important to be aware of where you're going to benefit from a more precisely controlled uh, machine. And again, you've got stats down the bottom there, which just say to you, you know, across the range, which ones are the, the lowest, which ones are the, the narrowest, and which ones are the are the longest so you can see a bit of context uh, over what i'm talking about uh, where some may be applicable and, and perhaps some where they may not be um, and then the final part about considerations it sort of winds back to that that, that first slide I, I showed you about risk yeah we understand where the risks are yeah and the use of low level can, can really low level access can really benefit and, and reduce uh, some of the the, the known issues uh, and risks which are out there in the market. So slips and trips is, is one which you'll all be very, very much well aware of. Um, so when it comes to a low level access platform, you can see there in the bottom uh, bottom right hand side, each of those machines are gonna be tow boarded. They have to, 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 to be legally you know, ready to use. Uh, they're all gonna have handrails again, uh, because of how they need to be, they need to be designed uh, prior to use. Uh, and they will all have reasonably low steps to walk into them. So again, you are, you are tackling that risk head on through those um, types of safety features on a machine. Uh, you've also got the benefits in, in setup uh, through the use of, of a low level access platform, because all you do is walk into it and you elevate and you go. There's no manual handling in, in setting up the, the, the tower. Uh, there's no risk of hand trap through having to screw something into something else or, or, or get the, the stabilizers right. And importantly, there's no loose com components, which could again, be a, a you know a, a lifting issue, but also a falling objects issue. With a low-level access platform, you just don't have that. Uh, so again, it, it makes it simpler but safer. Um, if you look to the image on the far right, you see those the, 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 the sort of silhouetted image. It probably describes what I'm talking about as much as anything else. This is about posture and load management. So with a fixed non-mechanical solution, it will only go as high as it goes. So that promotes or it tempts certain types of operators to perhaps overreach. Uh, certainly to bend, uh, you know, and, and, and to get into, you know, difficult positions to lift something from point A to point B. Uh, with a platform, you can wind it up, you can elevate it via electric power to wherever you need to go to reduce that need to bend, to lift and to overreach. Okay, so there's definitely an ergonomic benefit from a safety point of view in, in respect to these platforms. Um, you've also got the benefit of space. You know, I mean, these machines depending on which one you want, which one you look at, and obviously I've given you the dimensions on previous slides, they will all be fairly narrow, they will all be fairly compact, they take up not a lot of space anyway, uh, but through having less uh, need for stabilizers or any supporting device, they're going to create less trip hazards, which you would have to, uh, to make uh, some of these platforms, you know, uh, you know co compliant to be, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the amount of side force, uh, the, the, the rating that they have to have, which goes into the next section. You know, all these pl platforms need to be rated to a certain level uh, to be able to be safely elevated and be stable at height. Uh, and again, they meet that standard without the need for additional supports. Um, going on to the last two points here, I mean, this is particularly important uh, with low level access through knowing what we know, how people will often use a uh, non-mechanical solution. With these machines, they cannot be surfed or pushed along while the operator is at height. You know, they, they will automatically break uh, when the machine is elevated. Yeah, and if they're a self-propelled machine, they will only operate when the operator asks it to do so. Yeah, uh, it, it's important to understand that. So you, there's no risk of someone pushing some along at height, sorry, at the base and, and causing that machine to sit to tip. And that's an important safety feature of all of these low level access platforms. Um, and then finally, uh, an important one, uh, quite, a, quite a simple one, really, is is if you're using a non-mechanical access platform, how are you going to rescue that person if they're up at two, three meters in the air? How are you going to bring them down? Um, and I don't know all the answers to that with with, with non-mechanical. I'm sure there is a there is a way, but that's a, it's going to be difficult one way or another. It's going to involve, I would imagine, some manual handling. Whereas on a platform, yeah, if it's powered, you're going to have two means of getting that machine down uh, from four meters down to zero. And if it's a non-powered solution, you will have an extendable spanner, uh, which you can reach up to the turntable uh, to bring that machine down. So you've got options 
um, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to rescue someone who might be in trouble uh, due to ill health or, 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 or something else. OK, so they're just some important things I think you, you all need to have a, have a think about when, when selecting tool for task and how the benefits of a low level access platform can really help you. Right. So that's the that, there, there's some of the, the, the key components to have a, have a have a think about. I'm going to talk to you now a couple of examples of whereby through the use of low level, we've really uh, tried to push the bar from an innovating uh, point of view, for particular sectors. Yeah, and the first one's about the interior sector. Yeah, so you'll see there on the left hand side, you've got a red platform there, and that's the Bravi Leonardo, yeah, which we've got a, you know, a, a good amount of in the fleet. Yeah, but the bit that's different about that particular image over the, uh, the, you know, the basic product is the fact that it's got a, 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 an attachment on there called solo chips. And that's that black stalk, for the want of a better word, which, which travels upwards and then bends round above the operator. Um, and that's something which we're the only people in the UK now to have this, uh, th th this attachment available for hire. And what it does is through electric power, and if you look at the bottom right hand imagery, it takes the panel from the base of the machine, so you don't have to lift it up anyway, you simply place it on the, uh, on the attachment. And through electric power, it will travel uh, the, the, the plasterboard up uh, and then around to above the operator, so then they can then install the panel safely uh, with one person, yeah? Uh, says less labor what you're saving 150 pound a day there perhaps with less labor uh, you're installing 50 percent more materials and I'll, I'll i'll give you the example of how we've got that uh, on the next slide and with zero manual handling because how else are you going to do this it'll probably be with two scissor lifts you'd have probably needed two people to have balanced them on the handrails or some other means which isn't particularly uh, advocated uh, and and you're going to have to lift that up to height. So again, we are able to avoid that through this solution. We we just need people to to see it, to understand it, to trial it, and put it to work, and 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 allow you guys to prove how innovative this solution is. Um, I will do my best now to show you the video of this one. Um, so bear with me. I just press play any second. You should So you can see there the operator's done minimal manual handling. He's got it ready to go. It's all positioned. And with one person, it's a very simple job for him then to do that job uh, and install a safety. Like I said, 50% quicker, one person, much safer. So there we go. Right. Let me just go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint slide. Okay, right. So we move on, um, and it's it's really uh, sort of I guess uh, evidencing uh, how this machine and this solution has been really uh, beneficial uh, and has been proven, and it's the reason why we've purchased this solution uh, in, in volumes this year. Yeah, so we trialed the solo gyps on the Leonardo machine last year over at Midland Metropolitan Hospital uh, with Balfaviti and 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 Flynn Interiors, particularly with with Mr. Holland uh, from from Flynn. Um, this machine was put to task over six weeks, uh, over the summer of last year. And you can see there on the right hand side, some of the huge benefits, which I've kind of taken you through already, you know, this per, per panel, and these are overhead ceiling panels. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not um, vertical panels. They're not small ceiling tiles. These are about, you know, the larger um, ceiling plasterboard panels. Uh, per installation of a sheet, it was taking uh, what, one minute uh, plus 20 seconds for positioning compared to with two traditional scissor lifts and all of that manual handling, you know, more like three to four minutes. Um, it was been done with one operator um, uh, in the main, uh, instead of two operators throughout the, uh, the, the, the entire process normally of installing these overhead ceiling panels. And the quantity was just blown us away with what the, the productivity gains they were getting. Once the operators were used to this solution, they were installing double per day. So you're saving one person effectively doing double the work and it's a lot safer. It, it's easy to say it's a no brainer, but if you're installing uh, the, 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 the ceiling panels up to 40 kilos and sort of 12 foot uh, in, in, in size and no more, then you can really benefit through the use of the solution. It's great to, to have proven it and for the company to have invested and for me to now be able to share that with, with, with yourselves on the call. So 
Um, the other half of this coin, yeah, and this is showing how we're trying to innovate in, in all areas of the use of, of, of low level access, is through accessing services through ceiling tiles. Now, anyone who's construction in, in construction will, will clearly be aware of this challenge and it needs no better de depiction <laughs> than the image on the left hand side. But this is normally for residential or commercial builds where there's an office or, or clinical space. Yeah, and Midland Metro Hospital was clearly one of them. Um, the jobs they'll need to do, they'll often have to, um, as well as install them, access, you know, required within them, as the person is on the left hand side there to do a job. But often when they need to go within that space, they need to be up upwards of a meter uh, within that square. And that is incredibly challenging to achieve with a with a with a platform, because as you can see on the left, the the, the handrails have to be a big um, uh, to allow the operator to do the job in a standard uh, application for a low level access platform. Yeah, so and some of those spaces can be very restricted. Some of them might be 600 by 600. Some of them might be more restrictive. Um, but there are, and that's the point of this. The, the, one of the point of this uh, webinar today to give you some some information and update. Uh, that there are options available yeah and you can see there on the far right hand side these solutions are ready to go right now you've got a solution there from G gmg solution there from mech and from tower tower and that power tower solution on the right there with the orange basket you know measures 550 by 550 that's ready to go tomorrow if you want it so again this is about understanding what's out there to be able to do the job um you know amongst other things um but beyond that you know if you're access restriction is a little bit more challenging you know and we've seen that recently on another job you know which is 500 by 350 um in terms of that access gap you know there, there, there's the ability within nationwide within our supply chain to be able to engage understand the problem and come up with a bespoke solution yeah um, and as long as it you know the, the, it's within the realms of reality and it's not for a one-day job um you know these things can be done and there's a great example there on on, on that slide on the below there where we're working towards currently a prototype to be able to achieve that access solution within that 500 by 350 uh, gap which is incredibly you know small but big enough for a human being but not big enough for uh, an access platform to get in there so again this just gives you the the the, the confidence uh, or the knowledge or the awareness that there's something out there that perhaps you didn't know about before and through engagement and, and particularly early engagement uh, we can help you uh, through our current range but also through our design team and our supply chain to answer some of those problems okay so hopefully that's been useful for you uh just to see where we're going and that's not the be all and end all there'll be other challenges you guys will face you just need to talk to us uh, and there might be a solution on some of these platforms uh, with a bit of engagement um so to summarize yeah we've talked about risk you know and it is just as important at low levels um to be aware of risk as well as it is at 30 meters or 40 or 90 or wherever wherever um it's important to to select the right tool for the task you know through your process whatever that might be uh, and use the expertise of your supply chain to to, to select uh that, that that right machine or that right uh tool to, to do the job we've talked about you know understanding you know your task your productivity challenges ground conditions the the the, the need for space and control of your of your solution and flexibility and then understanding where some of these solutions can be very risk mitigating yeah they can deal with things like slips and trips and having uh, backup measures like like rescue um we've talked about sector driven innovation through interiors with the application of solo chips uh, and that is available to any of our customers on, on a trial if you want to take it you know for a week uh, on you know on a free for a week all you need to do is just talk to us and we'll arrange it this needs to be proven across all of our customer base so not just us sharing the the, the data through case studies you can prove it to yourself i guarantee you if it's a overhead ceiling panel solution uh, that's going to be a benefit again you, you you guys need to talk to us uh, and then we can apply that uh, we've also talked about you know options for narrow access um you know ceiling tile you know issues and some of the solutions we've got to offer there uh, which again through uh, through discussion, through dialogue, through understanding, we can, you know, it, uh, by all means, it, depending on whether it's, you know, in the basis of reality, we, we possibly could help. Again, without the conversation, you're never gonna know. And that ultimately adds adds value uh, and is the reason why, you know, we, we do what we do in this sector and, and hopefully why the reason why you've dialed into this, this, this webinar today. Um, so that's the end of the webinar, you know, uh, hopefully that's not gone on too long, hopefully that's been useful. Um, 
Louise, was there any questions which have been raised uh, which we need to answer over the call here today? Yes, yes, there are. So I'll just go through some of the questions that have come up, guys. So uh, first question is for Ash Fox. Will all this information be presented to me or emailed to me? So can we get that across to them? Yeah, yeah, through Jordan support, um, we'll, we'll be able to send out uh, information to anyone who wants it uh, following this. So if anyone else wants this, please just put on the on the question board there or email us at marketing at nationwideplatforms.co.uk uh, and we can send on on the content that we've presented here today. Some of it is, I don't know, sensitive. Some of it is still in design, so we might have to take out some of the bits. But in the main, most of it's there available uh, and perfectly uh, capable of, of, of me being able to do, you know, sort of dis discuss it further with you where needed. Brilliant. We've also got a note from Peter Douglas as well from iPath. Um, just regards uh, choosing the correct mute and they have a new um, iPath assess site assessment course which I just wanted to let everybody know about which you can get through us. So just to let everybody know about that, that's from Peter Douglas. Um, we also have a couple of questions from Billy Roden as well. So Billy has asked, um, how many uh, low-level items do we have on the fleet? Okay. First part so, of the question. Well, the answer to that, there's 1,300 currently in the fleet. Uh, and I believe from the first slide is, yeah, across 12 different types. So yeah, there's, there's quite a range out there, quite a volume of them. And secondly, with the uh, with the solo gyps and the um, the narrow access uh, adjustments that we can make to the cages, you said about early engagement. What sort of uh, early engagement do you require for some of those things? What are we looking at? Um, so if we take the, the the example of the ceiling solution, we've not got there yet, you know. But actually, once we've produced the designs with the, the help of the manufacturer, that's actually three months sort of lead time for us going through that design process the, the, the manufacturing the certification and, and getting to site so it's not to say that all challenges will be three months but i think that's probably a, a realistic gauge you don't get these things uh, next day if it's a bespoke design now if we take the solo gyps yeah that's a that's a bona fide product which is in the fleet already ready to go um so that will be just based on availability um so that could be next day that could be next week but if it's bespoke then you're going to need to give us a, a little bit more time. But that just needs to start with a conversation. And then we can advise you at that point, depending on whatever you need us uh, to engage with. Excellent. OK, uh, another question is from John Crossan, and it says um, in the two pictures shown, he's referencing to some of the high risk in issues of entrapment that was shown on those pictures. What an anti entrapment devices are fitted to the powered platforms that we've talked about? So when it comes to low level access, there currently isn't a secondary guarding device uh, that, 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 that we've got to, to, to offer that I've seen in the market yet to date. That's not to say that there won't be. Um, uh, that, that there most likely there most likely will be some solutions that we'll be able to share maybe later this year or, or, or next. But currently at the moment on low level access, uh, apart from a shroud, you know, which stops you being able to catch your uh, your, your, your sleeve on the um, on the joystick and, and involuntarily elevating yourself. Apart from the shrouds, um, uh, there, there's no current uh, in, uh, entrapment solution on low level uh, on the low level solutions. But that will change. It just takes time, and you know, the, you know, the the design process has, has dealt with the I guess the highest risk first, which would have been the the, the, the cherry pickers, um, and then the larger scissor lifts, you know, truck mounts, and, and then low level. But it's definitely something that needs to be done, and it's a good point to raise. Lovely. Another question is from Carl Corduroy, Corduroy and he asks um, if you can just give him a big, bit of an overview again on the IPATH certification needed to operate low level access. So depending on the, uh, the, the, the type of platform, you've got two different licenses for two different types of platforms. So the, the first course is PAV, so that's a push around vertical. It kind of says what it is. If you have to push it around uh, to maneuver it into place, whether it ascends under electric or, or not, um, it is, a, it is a, a push around vertical, yeah? So that machine will, um, will, will come under that PAV category. Um, if the machine drives at height, then it's self-propelled. So that comes under the, uh, the, the, the 3A category, so A standing for scissor lift or, or vertical. And then three standing for self-propelled, they'll need the 3A uh, course. 
uh, to be able to, to for under IPAF terms, to be deemed competent. But it is down to you guys to determine what that competence is. But that's a, a world recognised uh, body and, and a course for those different types of platforms. But it doesn't. I tell you one thing: it doesn't do. It doesn't mean that that the person's going to be familiar with that platform six weeks later, three years later, if they've not used the platform since that course three years ago. So that's the importance. And we've not gone into that in detail to, for here today, but that's the importance of familiarization, uh, you know, ensuring that, that, that someone's confident on a machine, including a low level access platform prior to use. Absolutely, great answer. Um, somebody has asked, how do we find out more about working at Height 2022? Well, you, you need to email that address there. And then Jordan will keep you up to date uh, with every every update which is coming. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean that's something which we've done. Is it ten years now? Is it Louise? Is it more than ten years? Absolutely, yeah, a good ten years, I think. I think we had our ten year yeah. anniversary last time, I think. Yeah, yeah. So that's something which we wanted to continue, but clearly during the COVID period, that's been quite challenging. Um, but we look forward to getting that back in, in play and, and welcome you all back to that 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 brilliant forum and anyone else new. Uh, he wants to attend. Yeah, Lovely. I'd also suggest that you uh, you watch this space and uh, subscribe to all the future webinars. So uh, where after uh, after um, this session in the coming days, we will be sending around an email to all the attendees, and that will have the video link. And uh, and as I say, in a, each subsequent month, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be updating you as and when we have information about the working at height event as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Questions, I think that's all of our questions unless there's any more to come through let me double check if anybody's going to fire anything through in the next few seconds let what me just finish this oh, we, have one more. we have one more we have one more okay. coming before you finish oh two more it's just flown in okay so are there any pipe handling devices for the low level platforms and that's come from Nick Ball okay thanks Nick um, uh, on the low level access do you know what they're, they're, they're there isn't currently on the push around verticals. I think there's probably something that we could do on the low level access, like the the, the self propelled solutions. Um, uh, and that's something which, you know, we've had engagement from our manufacturer, you know, our, our manufacturer based on, on whether there's a demand for that. So if there is a demand for it, then then let's have a conversation. There, there's not an off the shelf one at the moment, but they, it's perfectly within our means to design if if, uh, you know, if a customer has a has a bona fide requirement so nick if you if you want that mate you need to tell me uh and, and we will work towards that because i think that's a great this something i've wanted on these low level uh, access solutions uh, for a long while so good question we can talk to me and, and then we'll, we'll we'll go down the development route together great right we've got another good question from john Crossan again and he says on the solo gyps is there any issues with potential hand injuries in the drive stroke belt mechanism okay well as, as soon as you um uh, as soon as you place the uh, the plasterboard onto the the attachment yeah you you, you don't have to touch it uh, up until the point that it's then above you yeah, because it's controlled completely through its its electronic arm so in my view, I can't see any there. I mean, we've got securing systems on the bottom of it to make sure that the, 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 the plasterboard doesn't go anywhere. It's tilted towards the basket to make sure it doesn't, you know, tilt the other way. And it's, and it's I say it's slow, it's, it's controlled enough that it, it, it's, it's not going to get run away with itself. It just travels, you know, uh, under control uh, through the vertical and then the horizontal plane. Uh, to where we uh, where we need it to be. I think probably maybe the easiest answer would be to try and get a, a trial on site with you guys to at least you can see and and, and build your own confidence in into uh, the ability of this solution. And we are more than happy to do that if you if you let us know. Excellent, that's good. And and then lastly, Peter Douglas is also as he's on the call, he's also answered the question regarding what is required. And he also says just to let everybody know that if they have their three L three A power card. There is no need to do a PAB course, so that's enough. So just wanted to just yeah. remind everybody of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good point to make in terms of the transfer of competence. If you are competent in that scissor lift, that will carry over. But it doesn't doesn't mean you shouldn't be familiarised on it. And uh, I'm not saying Peter hasn't or hasn't mentioned that, but that's that's a real big point to make. If you're you're trained, it doesn't mean you're familiar. If you've not used it for six six weeks, you know, or, or three years, that's a real a real big one. Whether you're on a low level platform or otherwise. Um, okay, so 
just to close off there, if, if, if anyone wants any further engagement from us on any of the topics here today or any support on site, you know, we can we can give you that technical guidance. We can provide the site survey option. Uh, we can send out the product guides. Whatever you need us for, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. If anyone wants a trial uh, on the solo chips, all they need to do again is just message the email down there and you'll be getting a call from me, fear not, uh, and we will we will set that up. Um, the ceiling tile solution, depending on what version you would like, um, we can start to talk to you about possible options. And I think that could be a game changer. If we get something which is established um, uh, within the, you know, the, the, re the, the, the reality of what some of these gaps are, then I think there's, there's a market that we can go to with, with a real powerful answer there. Um, so again, if you want a trial, talk to us. Um, if any of you have dialed into the Mute Masterclasses before, um, then, then, then brilliant. If anyone wants to, to know about the Masterclasses or they've got other people they want to put onto them, uh, then, then I'll be happy to set them up with you separately. It, you know, it kind of follows on from this subject, really. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, get in contact with us via email, uh, via the LinkedIn invites, which no doubt you would have all had, or by going onto the website and, and, and searching and finding. Um, and that's about it from me. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Louise. Um, is there anything else? We'll, we'll close down the webinar. Thanks very much, everybody. Yeah, thanks very much, and I uh, hope to see you all again in June. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.